Due to popular requests, we are going to cover charging lithium polymer batteries. Do you run lithium polymer or are you still on the nickel metal hydride? So today's video is going to cover the basics of charging your lithium polymer batteries. I'm going to ignore the nickel metal hydride and NICAD batteries because let's be honest, they are a very, very infinitesimal part of the radio control segment these days. So I feel it more appropriate to talk about lithium. The big things, we'll just start out with uh, the dangers of charging and discharging lithium. Lithium, well, the lithium itself isn't really the dangerous part in these. It's actually the stuff that they put in between the anode and the cathode. It is called an organic solvent. And that organic solvent is extremely flammable. It is uh, like most any other solvents. But when it does start to catch fire, there is a potential for it to turn into a lithium fire, even though the lithium is technically in ion form. Uh, occasionally, the batteries will get hot enough from the solvent fire that it'll turn into a lithium fire and then uh, you just can't put them out. It doesn't even need oxygen to keep burning. So there's your warning. When these guys go up, not only can they uh, shoot flames way out because of the solvent, they can become little rockets because of that flame coming out. And if it gets into too bad of a thermal runaway situation, you can have a flame that literally is not extinguishable until everything is out. As you can probably guess, this is why when there are house fires from batteries that they're unexpected and usually they're not attended to very well. And that's kind of the big thing. You always want to attend to your charging. I would recommend either you get a, uh, a couple of bricks and a cement block to put these inside when you're charging. Get a lipo bag, which can at least keep them from, you know, becoming a projectile. Uh, but the flames will still come out these little tabs in here. There's also battery safes or bat safes that you can charge in. There's a lot of options these days. Uh, for all that matters, you could even get a metal ammo can and just don't close down the lid all the way so that it has a chance to vent. Although I think there's some videos out there that shows that if you did close the lid down all the way that it wouldn't become a bomb or anything. There's not that much pressure to these. So there's our forewarning. It is dangerous to charge these. Even more dangerous is charging a, a worn out or a puffy pack. So I've got a puffy pack right here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's, it's not something that I should be charging anymore. And that's your big indicator. Uh, when it puffs, that means that the organic solvent has actually come out of in between that anode and cathode. And it is just free inside the cell. When it's free inside the cell, that means it's not in between the anode and cathode and you can get dry spots. And when you get dry spots, that is when you get short circuits or when you have heat buildup because it's not properly conducting electricity, you have a high resistant spot in there. So there it is. Don't charge puffy batteries, always charge attended. And now let's actually charge or at least talk about charging. So. I normally would use a lipo bag. You stick the battery into the lipo bag hooked up to your charger and you close it back down and you charge it. For today's illustration, we're not going to worry about putting it in there. And first, what we're going to talk about is the various types of chargers. So back in the day, back in my day, we always had to buy a 12 volt to 24 volt power supply for the chargers. And, and this was just industry standard. There weren't very many AC type. You had to use a 12 volt battery or you had to get a 12 volt power supply, which in most cases was much larger than the charger, much, much larger. Uh, this is an old chargery power 680B plus. Uh, let's see, it was good for doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, how many amps? I think five amps charge. Oh no, 10 amps charge, max 210 watts here, assuming that our power supply would be able to support that as well. And a lot of times you only get like a 10 amp power supply at 12 volts. Uh, now, the, these days you can get 20 amp power supplies and so this could actually do its work, but that is what you had to do back in the day. You have your battery plug on there. You have your balance port plug. So the battery plug would plug into the battery spot. And then our balance port, this, you know, multi-wire one would plug into wherever was clever on there for the proper battery voltage. You hook it up to your 12 to 24 volt power source. And then you go through all the button pressings to get to the proper charging. Now these days you can buy much simpler ones such as the Traxxas Easy Peak and this is a dual version essentially with the Traxxas and uh, I 
do believe, y'all let me know in the comments what other companies are coming out with these, you know, kind of all-in-one standardized or non-standardized, however you want to put it, non-compatible with anything else sort of chargers. But boy, this thing is easy. You plug it in, you tell it your battery type, LiPo or nickel metal hydride with that, your LiPo charge, you've got store charge, you got fast charge, you got balance charge, and then you hit either your charge rate select if you need to, and then your, your start and stop. But a lot of times when you plug these in, it's, it's gonna, just gonna be on the right settings for charging. Let's run through it real quick, just to show you what it looks like. There it is. Just took a minute to boot. All right, so this is our Traxxas Easy Peak. It's, it's flashing lights, it's telling us it doesn't know what's going on, so we're gonna plug in a battery. It only plugs in one way. And we're on balance charge. You always want a balance charge. Doesn't matter any of these. You always want to use your balance ports. Uh, it is on LiPo. We can do the charge rate. The charge rate is automatically on four amps, but if we wanted to change it, there's our charge rate button. Come on now. What do you have to like hold it, hold it down? Charge rate select. Oh, it, it's not letting me select anything. So four amps it is. You hold down the button and it goes boop -a boop and it starts. So that's pretty much it on this charger. It's pretty simple to use. I'm gonna hold that down, it should stop, and we're good. I don't use these batteries anymore. This is a two cell 5800 pack that I would have my son charge. Yeah, pretty simple. Pretty simple, something that a five-year-old could manage. Although you don't want a five-year-old really watching the batteries to charge because if there's a problem, the five-year-old's probably not gonna be able to stop that fire or, you know, pull it really fast to get it out of your house before things burn down. So now let's talk about more modern chargers and ones that are universal. This is the ISDT D2. This is a smart charger. It has the integrated power supply just like this one does, but this one is uh, 200 watts or 12 amp peak and dual channel. Now I don't believe that it'll do 12 amps on both channels at the same time, but it will support uh, let's see, seven cell LiPo. It's got the built-in XT60 port right on the body of it. So let's plug this in and run through it. And the more features that a charger has, the more complicated that they are to use. As you can see, I've got this extra balance tap lead on there. Um, you know, this, this is kind of a, a power user type thing to do because I can plug four cell, three cell, two cell, anything in here, but I have to make sure that I bias the cells on this adapter all the way to the ground. So as you can see, my balance lead doesn't actually fill up the entire plug, but I plug it in there. I plug in our power lead. It's going to, you know, come up with our cells right here. And then for this one to charge, oh, I press the button. And it's like, hey, wait up, which channel? Channel one, it's lined up right there. It says it on the outside. We press that channel one. Then I press the button again and start task would be our charging. Now, this is when on a smarter charger, you need to be careful about setting your charge current. So let's talk about the charge current. Uh, some batteries, they have it labeled on there. Uh, yeah, right on the back, this Helios RC says max charging rate is 2C. Let's look at this one. Max charging rate is 2C. Let's look at this one. Max charging rate is not listed on this. Uh, maybe on the front. This is a graphene battery, so more than likely it'll take a lot higher. Do, 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 do. Yeah, an ADC pack. The higher the C rate of the pack, the higher the charge rate can be. So let's talk about these 2C packs. C stands for capacity. Most of these are listed in milliamp hours, which we have to convert to amp hours to get the proper charge rate. So uh, 1500 milliamp hours, milli means thousand, we would divide that by a thousand and we would get 1.5 amp hours. Same thing for this pack, 3000 milliamps is the same as three amp hours. And on this one, 3700 milliamp hours is 3.7 amp hours. For our charge rates, this is gonna be the easiest one, 3000 milliamp hours or three amp hours. A one C charge rate is going to be exactly one times the capacity. So one times three amp hours, because our charger works in amps, that is gonna be three amps at a one C charge rate. A one C charge rate will take exactly one hour. 
if you want me to do some more math on that, leave some comments down below. We can really get into the nitty gritty of all the conversion factors and everything. But this is basically how it works. You would convert your milliamp hours into amp hours. So you knock off, you know, you divide by a thousand, you knock off three zeros, you move the decimal point three places, however you like to look at it. And then you multiply that by your charge rate. A 1C charge rate once more for this pack is going to be 3 amps. A 2C charge rate is going to be 2 times our capacity. So 2 times 3 is 6 amps. That will only take 30 minutes to charge. If it's an even nicer pack or a pack that, say, wants you to wear it out faster, they'll say, hey, you can do 4C charge rate. We multiply it by 2 again, or we say multiply 4 times 3, that's 12 amps. That is going to charge in only 15 minutes or one fourth of an hour. As you can see, when we double our C rate of charge, we have the time that it takes to charge. So one hour for one C, half of an hour for two C, 15 minutes or a quarter of an hour for four C, and for five C, it only takes 12 minutes to charge. A lot of the really high capacity or really uh, low resistance, the graphene packs, a lot of those will actually say five C charge rate is okay. Do you really need to charge in 12 minutes? If you're going out in a crawler, you're probably gonna get an hour of runtime from this pack alone. You're probably okay charging it at a lower rate. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my current up here. I'm gonna roll up, current setting, all right, uh, 3700, this one's 2C compatible. That would technically be over seven amps, it'd be 7.4 amps if we wanted to do 2C charge rate or 3.7 amps if we want to do 1C. So I'm going to use my scroll wheel. Hopefully you can see that on the overhead. We will select our current setting and I'm going to roll this down. I'm not, uh, you know, actually I am in a hurry. Let's, let's be in a hurry today. So we're going to go up to, uh, let's just say seven amps. It's going to be plenty fast, plenty, plenty, plenty fast. So seven amps, the faster you charge, the more you wear out your packs, just to give you a heads up. Uh, this one also has things like your cell voltage. So if I didn't want to go all the way on here, 4.2 volts is fully charged. If I wanted to knock about 10% of the capacity off of this pack, but double my ability to cycle this pack, I would go down to 4. Point, uh, I, I would go down to 4.1. It doesn't go that low. 4.15 volts a cell. Sure, let's select that. It's not going to give us a full charge, but you know what? This pack is going to last a whole lot longer because we're not fully charging it. And we're not shoving it full with that, that 2C charge rate a little bit less. If I really wanted to baby it, then I would do just the regular 3.7 amps. And there we go. So we are now charging. As you can see, the amperage is ramping up on the charger and it will beep at us whenever it is ready. And we can actually look on this one. It gives us a lot of information. So it's telling us a LiPo, a 3S pack is plugged in. Yes, indeed. I know this is a 3S pack. It's always good to check. So far, it has pumped in 36 milliamp hours, 37, 38, 39, 41. It is telling us the progress, how much charge it puts in. And on a charger like this, if you go out for, let's say a one hour trail ride, and then you come back and you charge it up and you only have to put in 500 milliamp hours into it, then that tells you, you only use 500 milliamps in an hour of charging and something like a 3.6 seven amp hour or 3,700 milliamp hour pack, that's gonna be hours and hours of runtime. You know, six hours, seven hours of runtime. In an ideal world, when it boils down to it, after an hour, maybe you're gonna get bored, you're gonna use more wheel speed. So your runtime will vary, it depends on the motor, the gearing, the uh, weight of the vehicle, your terrain that you're on, your driver habits is a really big one if you're the type that likes to kind of slow poke and ease around on stuff, or if you just like to hammer down, hammer down, hammer down, I'm not getting up this obstacle. More wheel speed is the answer for getting up this obstacle. Your runtime will be lower. So that is essentially charging a battery. It's relatively straightforward. Usually the chargers these days, all the nice new chargers, they kind of step you through everything. Of course, there's going to be specific uh, things on the YouTubes about how to charge your batteries. If you want something that's uh, specific to this guy, I'm sure there's reviews about the ISDT D2 smart charger where they will give you all the little ins and outs of it. But as far as just charging, that's it. Again, I'm going to go through, you always want to be around when you charge, you want to use a LiPo bag, or you want to use a LiPo safe, or you want to have a cinder block, which is what I usually use with a brick on top. That way, if there is something that goes wrong, it's going to retain pretty much all of that uh, flame on the inside, hopefully. And you're not, get, well, you're going to get a lot of smoke in your house, but you're not going to get a battery flying around your house literally as a flame 
rocket battery. Uh, look at look just look at some YouTube videos. They're certainly out there where you see the sucker catch fire in the corner of the pack vents, and then that is a rocket just whoosh, right across the room. Sometimes they'll just unplug themselves from the charger, and now you don't have to worry about a fire here. You have to worry about a fire over there and possibly a fire here. So lipos are risky, but as long as you take precautions, you don't charge a puffy lipo. No, no, no. You don't use puffy lipos anymore. The, the charging is really the dangerous time for them. So keep an eye on them. Don't charge puffy lipos and you will more than likely be safe. I certainly hope so. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, knock on this uh, multi piece of wood here. Yeah, it looks like pine. Pine should be good enough, right? I hope so. Oh, if you do have any more questions, leave your comments down below. I'll do my best to get to them. And as always, thanks for tuning in and happy charging.